empathic, empathy, highly sensitive. These terms might feel a little confusing and today I wanted to create some clarity around them. Stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Heather Evans, a self-care and empowerment coach working with empaths and highly sensitive people around the world. If you're ready to see your sensitivity as your greatest asset, remember to subscribe to my channel and click on that bell to get notified when I release new videos each week. One of the questions I get asked most frequently is around the differences between having empathy, what being an empath is, and what it means to be a highly sensitive person. So today I wanted to create some clarity around it. First things first, everybody can have empathy. Everybody has the ability to have empathy for another person. And what having empathy means is that we are able to put ourselves in somebody else's shoes, that we can imagine what it's like to experience something someone else is going through, or maybe you've even experienced it yourself and so can have a direct relation to why somebody might be having a reaction that they are. Now, empathy takes practice. In fact, I call it flexing your empathy muscle. And it takes practice to learn and understand how people react, to understand their emotional response to something. So if you're interested in flexing your empathy muscle, if you're interested in building that muscle up, I would encourage you to step back from judgment, to step back from critique, and to simply step into a place of observation and an acceptance for what another person is experiencing, to move into a place of perhaps putting yourself in their shoes and trying to relate to how they're responding to a situation, to a thing, to a person, to an event. By doing this on a regular basis, our empathy muscle builds. We no longer become as judgmental. We no longer step in with an assumption about how an individual should be reacting. Instead, we hold space for a person's reaction based on their experience, what they've been through, and how they identify. So now that we've cleared up that everybody can develop empathy and that everybody has the capacity for empathy, let's move on to the other two terms, empath and highly sensitive person, because this is where things can get a little confusing. I want to start with the term highly sensitive or highly sensitive person or HSP as it's also known. The term highly sensitive person is a much more accepted term in psychology, psychiatry, and other fields like that. Highly sensitive people are sensitive to their surroundings. They have a system that is more open and accepting to identifying with another person's experience. Highly sensitive people can easily relate to how and what another person is going through. They can understand on a deeper level another person's reaction or another person's emotional state. In addition to that, highly sensitive people might also be sensitive to things like food, sound, light, crowds, things like this. Because their systems are a lot more sensitive to what's happening around them. Now, one thing that highly sensitive people also possess is the ability to be rational and intellectualize their experience. In other words, it's almost as though they have this shield, I want to say, for lack of a better term right now, that enables them to create some distance between someone else's experience and their own. So while they might be able to identify on a deeper level with what someone else is going through, they aren't in the experience with that person. Their, their ability to rationalize, to intellectualize, to almost go into a data analysis state about what's happening creates that shield, creates that almost boundary, a healthy boundary that enables them to go, that's your experience. I'm identifying with you on it, but I'm not experiencing it the same way you are. And this is where things shift for empaths. Not to say that empaths aren't able to rationalize, intellectualize, or go into a data analysis state, but because an empath is what I like to call extra sensitive, 
they will often experience what another person is experiencing physically, mentally, emotionally, energetically. The difference between highly sensitive people and empaths is just that. And empaths have this heightened openness, this heightened receptivity in their system that enables them to experience exactly what another person is going through. Now, because of this, some empaths might have challenges discerning if what they're feeling, what they're sensing is theirs or if it belongs to someone else's. And that's a lot of the work that I do with my clients. But at the same time, it also is their greatest asset. They can directly relate to what someone else is going through. They can have the same visceral experience that someone else is. Again, this is the biggest difference between highly sensitive people and empaths is that I'm actually sensing and feeling and having the experience that another person is having. One other thing that's really interesting to note is that all empaths are highly sensitive people. However, all highly sensitive people are not empaths. And we also need to recognize that our sensitivity rests on a scale and that our sensitivities can ebb and flow as we move through our lives. So we might have somebody who's highly sensitive in certain ways and in certain areas of their life. And as they recognize this as their greatest asset, they might begin to develop and explore their sensitivity even more, allowing it to open up and increase in different ways. The same thing for empaths, it rests on a scale. Some empaths that I work with are much more sensitive on an auditory level where they'll hear the same things that another person is hearing, whether they're actual things or whether they're thoughts or voices that are happening, almost like that inner dialogue <laughs> that goes on. Other empaths that I work with have the ability to see different things, to see energy in different ways. And other empaths have the ability to feel what another person is feeling. And so all of these experiences make up the spectrum of what it means to be a highly sensitive person and an empath. The other thing that I want to say is that there's not one that's good or bad or right or wrong. There's not one that's better or worse. It's just this beautiful experience that we have on this spectrum that we can have an openness and an awareness to our sensitivity and begin to cultivate it in ways that both serve us and can serve others while maintaining healthy boundaries along the way. I hope you found this video helpful and I would love to know if you identify as an empath or a highly sensitive person. And if you're not sure, I would encourage you to take the free quiz down below. I'm including a link to it in the description. I want you to see your sensitivity as one of your greatest gifts and greatest assets. I'd love to encourage you to register for a free empowerment session with me, a chance for us to talk about what's happening in your life. I'll include a link for that in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like it. Remember to subscribe to my channel and click on that bell to get notified when I release new videos each week. Stay ignited out there. I'll see you soon. Bye.